official reveal of Mason Manor renovations. If you've been following along on Instagram, you know I shared so many details of the actual renovation process in this place, but this is the first official reveal. To be honest with you, I almost continued to put this off because there are tiny details in here we are still finishing. Space is not fully decorated, but you know, no time like the present. We don't live like that here. I wanted to bring you in behind the scenes, of course show you some of this renovation process, but also really give you the juicy details behind the design decisions and just everything that went into making this space. We really did not change that much about this kitchen layout. The big changes we did make were tearing this wall down and removing the upper cabinet so that we could open up this space to the living room. That's obviously the biggest thing that we did in here besides, of course, redoing everything. <laughs> okay, so of every decision in this house, one of my absolute favorites was this kitchen cabinet color. I've done two kitchens with white cabinets. I've done black, I've done gray, and I've done green. I knew for the design of this space that we wanted something bright, but I didn't want stark white. I wanted something warmer and creamier. I wanted to add just some character um, and some warmth and balance out the other elements that we have going on in this kitchen. It really oscillates between like a warm, almost beige. Sometimes it looks more white, sometimes it leans a little gray. I think it has the perfect undertones. It just adds this beautiful like richness. It's not just a white kitchen. It's got some character to it and it just, ugh, it's just the best. So this is the first home we've lived in that I've gotten to custom build cabinets from scratch. I <laughs> was so thrilled, specifically because I wanted to put as many drawers as I possibly could. <laughs> I am such a fan of drawers. Are you with me on this? Drawers are infinitely better than cabinets. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to do an actual inside my drawers and my cabinets kitchen tour. Open everything up and show you how we actually have organized things and fill this kitchen because I thought about those things as I was designing this space. Let me know if you're interested in seeing that. With the other elements going on in the house, with the floors, with our black windows, I knew I wanted to go warmer and also just a little bit more traditional to feel a little bit more polished. So this polished brass just works perfectly. I went with these smaller, simple round knobs for the top cabinets and the top drawers. And then for the lower drawers, we have a cup pole. They're not like the chunky, more farmhousey poles. They really feel more refined and polished. And I just love the way that it pairs with everything else. This sink, oh my gosh, we love this sink so much. One of my requirements was a large white farmhouse sink. I didn't want dividers in it. It had to be a single basin sink, no divider. I wanted to be able to wash big pots and pans in my sink and I love it so much I can't even express. I think it also just pairs so nicely with this gorgeous brass faucet. This is an example y'all. You do not have to drop thousands of dollars on really high end things. This is one of those budget friendly faucets that has actually held up so well for us. Okay, the backsplash is another detail that I just love in this kitchen. We went with this Zelige tile. So these are actually handcrafted Moroccan tiles. I love the variation in the colors in this tile. Um, some are really white, some are more gray. They they honestly range and so when you stand back and really take it all in you get to see the array of colors we did a even a square stack on these square tiles just to go like as classic and simple as possible okay this is another thing i love so much about this kitchen the on counter hutch we do not have a ton of counter space so that's the thing about this kitchen it's actually not very big because we don't have a ton of countertop what I really wanted was a place to hide all of my countertop clutter. I didn't just want like a pantry cabinet. I wanted an actual countertop. So let me show you these sneaky doors that slide in. This is where I have our coffee maker, our blender, our tea kettle, all of my mix-ins for all of my drinks. It's kind of like our drink station. And then we also hid 
the microwave up here. Another thing, I was like, those things are eyesores, I wanted it away. <laughs> we don't use our microwave all that much. I will say this is one of those things that got a little bit tricky with our cabinet maker because he didn't know exactly what I wanted and I didn't do the best job of communicating exactly what I wanted even though I knew exactly what I wanted. Cashier got frustrated and said, why don't we just nix that and I'm so glad we did it. I'm so, so glad I just stuck through and made this happen because it really has made a difference in our countertop space and just our kitchen feeling clean and put away. Um, I love that I can just like close this up, but I also can leave it open. So like in the mornings, it's open while I'm using it, but I can also like close the doors and just pack it away. It's not like I have to like pick up my appliances and move it. It just stays hidden. So love, 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 love this hutch. Okay, one of the things that definitely could have made this an elevated kitchen would have been panel ready appliances, right? You know, the fridges that hide and the dishwashers that hide and blend like your cabinets, obviously I would have loved those. But when I looked at the price tag on those babies, I just knew that was not within our budget. It was not a place I wanted to allocate our funds to. So we just went as basic as possible. I did get a French door fridge, which was just such a dream of mine. If y'all know, we came from a apartment where we just had a really crappy fridge. We had a dishwasher that sounded like an airplane was taking off inside of our apartment. So just the fact that I have a quiet dishwasher that I can set to run at night while I'm sleeping, it's just the best. So we literally spent on all four of our appliances what we would have spent on like a panel ready dishwasher. So uh, maybe not quite, but pretty close. So, you know, that's an example of just talking about working within budgets. I get that question on renovations all the time. For me, that just was not worth it in this kitchen. I will say too, I think the stainless steel actually mixes really nicely with everything else going on in this kitchen. Um, it just adds a new color and texture and so I think it totally works. And we all know that I make 99% of the design decisions for all of our renovations. So when Cashmere has input and he has something he's really set on, I really try to honor that. And one of the things that he was set on was these upper glass cabinets. Taking your cabinets all the way up to the ceiling is definitely one of my favorite tips for making the space feel bigger. We only have nine foot ceilings, but this space feels so open. And I know part of that is because we actually have the cabinets going all the way up to the ceiling. I just went with a super basic square cross with the glass and I think it just pairs perfectly. It's a really great way to bring the cabinets all the way up. Just have some cake stands and our mortar and pestle and just a few things up there. It's a great way to just get some things out of the way, um, but also to really elevate the space. Okay, my concrete pendants. I shared a blog post for budget friendly pendants because I was on the hunt for the right thing in this kitchen and I could not be more pleased with these concrete pendants. I love them so much. I did not want to go with brass because that was going to be too much. I actually, one of the weird things I was kind of stuck on was having a black um, rod or cord from the ceiling just to tie in with the rest of the black going on with our other lighting fixtures. Uh, but I think that the concrete adds such a nice texture. Uh, it feels a little bit more modern, but it also feels really grounded, a little bit more casual. It just pairs so nicely with everything else we have going on. We lived in this home for like, what, nine months before we got bar stools. We entertained here without bar stools for so long because I was so patient and set on finding the perfect ones. I knew they needed a black element to tie in with the black windows. I love the way the caning gives some additional character and texture to it. Um, I love that they have backs, but they're not too tall. But they, the backs really make them more comfortable to sit in because we actually do entertain a lot here. We have friends over all the time. I love cooking for people and I wanted them to have a place, a cozy place to actually sit. And so I just love these bar stools. I think they, they were worth the wait. The breakfast nook. This, no doubt about it, is one of the things that just made me fall in love with this home. The way this window, this window, I mean, oh, it just, was calling for a round circular breakfast table, which is something I've just always dreamed of having a separate, like two separate dining tables, a more formal dining table. 
and a breakfast table and I just love it. We use it all the time. Um, I just love having the two separate spaces. This is so functional. This is just like the most beautiful morning light comes through these windows. This is where I sit and read my Bible in the mornings. It's just the best space. Back here, we I knew I wanted to extend the same cabinets that we had in the kitchen because I wanted this to feel like an extension of the kitchen. I did want the wet bar to feel different. So I'm gonna save that for a different reveal. I'm actually curious. I tried to hide it, but I'm curious if you got sneak peeks of that in some of these angles. When I show you the wet bar, the wet bar is its own thing, its own moment. I wanted that to be separate, but I did want the breakfast nook to really pull the kitchen together. Again, this kitchen's not huge. We don't have a ton of cabinetry, so it felt right to just keep these all the same. I actually love this space over here. This is where we have stored most of our like bigger appliances, like our air fryer and stuff like that. It's just the perfect spot for that. Of course, we had to give the Berkey her own little moment. We all know how much I love this thing if you don't. You're missing out. This might sound so silly, but I'm kind of obsessed with having lamps in the kitchen because I have them on all the time. So when I wake up at four in the morning, um, or even just at night, when like after we're done doing the dishes, when I'm making tea and stuff, you don't have to have your big bright kitchen lights on. I know I said one of my favorite things in the house is the neutral ground on the kitchen cabinets, which is true. That's definitely one of my favorite design decisions I made. But one of the, my favorite items in this entire house is these kitchen chairs. And I'm not kidding, from the very start of renovating this place, like from designing the kitchen and picking the backsplash and choosing the concrete pendants, one of the things I had in my brain was this chair exactly. I couldn't get it out of my mind. The problem is most of them are like five or $600 a piece, which just seemed a little bit crazy for me and our furniture budget for this home. So I just waited and I waited and I waited and I waited and I tried to like other things. I'm so glad that I waited. I found these beauties, TJ Maxx, for 200 a piece. They're Akasha wood, they're, the leather is, they're just gorgeous. They're absolutely gorgeous and I think they add the most incredible texture to everything else we have going on. I love the way the countertops and the backsplash and everything just is the backdrop for this. <laughs> I could rave about these chairs forever, but I truly love them so much. They make me so happy and they're actually surprisingly comfortable. Well, there you have it, friends. It feels so good to finally do an official tour so I can stop trying to hide things from you on Instagram. I can't wait to share the rest of this space with you. I didn't even show you the dining room. I also cannot wait to reveal the wet bar to you. I will link everything for you in the blog post, which I'll drop for you in the description box below. Let me know what your favorite part of the kitchen is and what else you wanna see. I cannot wait to start doing more recipe videos, grocery hauls, cooking videos, meal planning. Are you guys ready for all that stuff in this kitchen? Thank you so much for being here. I love sharing it with you. It's time to cook dinner though, so I will see you next time.